Hello and welcome to Ethereum Pro. In this video, we will have a look at the more detailed settings that you have available in the builder interface. As we've seen in a previous video, we can click the small edit icon next to a section name to see all the available settings. Let's go through them one by one. First, we can set the style for this section. For example, let's choose the secondary style, which will give our section a dark background color. What each of these options will actually look like is defined by the style that you have chosen in the style customizer. As we can directly see, not every line of text is clearly visible on this background color. That's why we have the second option here. We can choose a different text color. In this case, we'll pick the light one. This as well is defined by the style of your website. The max width option allows you to limit the maximum width that you allow your content to take up. By default, it just corresponds to the main container of your theme so that all content blocks are aligned below each other. However, we could also choose a smaller option or choose to expand the content to the full width. As you can see, this content is now wider than the one from the next section. We could even choose the none option, which means that the width is not limited at all. This allows us to put in elements that go right to the edges of your browser. For example, when using a slideshow or a large image that you want to fill up the whole width. As we will see later, we can also set a max width for the row that is included in this section. This allows us to have a very wide section by default, but then have the single rows appear in different width configurations. Let me actually choose the expand option. The height setting allows us to fill the whole viewport with this section. In some cases, like very short pages, you would also want to try the expand option. This makes sure that the browser window is always filled completely. For example, to make sure that a footer always appears at the very bottom of the screen. When a section is just displayed in the center of our page, this option doesn't make any difference. So we'll just go to the none option. You can set the size of the vertical padding inside your section. For example, let's pick a larger padding, which we will see add more space here at the bottom. And if we disable the remove top padding checkbox, we will see that the padding is now also added at the top. Let's select the default vertical padding. Now to demonstrate the transparent header option, I will quickly navigate back into the builder and I drag and drop the section to the very top of our page. Let's go back into the editing options. And when I now set this transparent header to overlay our section, we see the section expand all the way to the top of our window. If you choose a light background color for the section, you would have the dark overlay option that would look better. This effect here looks even nicer when we pick an image. Let's go to the style setting again, choose image, select a background image. Now this one is really, really light. So I go into the settings of the image background style and I choose a very dark overlay color with an alpha value close to one. Okay, I think this will look better if you choose a different background image, but I think you get the idea. Let's go back again and I want to pick the secondary style again because I quite liked that one. Now let's continue with the next setting. Here we can set animations for this section. For example, let's choose the slide left medium animation, which will make sure that when the page loads, all elements are moving in from the left side of the screen. We can also select to delay the single animations, which will make our items appear one by one. As you can see, every single item in this section animates with the animation that we've set here. However, we can also go 
to a single item, for example, the image here. And there in the settings tab, we see that by default, the element inherits the animation from the section. Here we can choose a different animation. For example, we could set this element to slide in from the other side. That way you can build up simple and complex animation schemes for your whole page. Note that you always need to activate some kind of animation on the section so that the child elements are actually animated. And then here at the bottom, the last three settings are pretty self-explanatory. You can set an ID, you can enter custom CSS classes that are added to this section, and you can set a value for the name property that is rendered in the HTML. These were the settings available for the section. Now let's go into the editing interface of the row. Remember that the row defines the grid that is displayed inside the section. In this case, we have two columns side by side, each taking up half the screen. Here we can also choose a different grid layout. Basically, these can be grouped into two different types. The basic grids always define ratios between the different columns. We can have one column taking up the whole screen. We can have two, three or four columns taking up the same space. And we can then have more options for two and three columns with different ratios. However, you also see these fixed options. The fixed layouts mean that we can set a fixed value for one column and the rest of the screen is then automatically calculated from the rest of the items. For example, let's pick the fixed left option. And we can now set a width for the first column of our grid. Let's choose a larger one. But I actually preferred a smaller version. And we could then, for example, decide to move one of our text to the first column. Uh, this isn't perfect yet. I think we would need to put in some more work into our single elements but I think you get the idea. You know what, actually I'll move the text back and we'll go back to the simple halves layout. I think that looked better in this case. The second option defines the gutter, so the spacing between the single grid columns. Here you see that you can also set a max width for this row. Note that this value cannot exceed the value of the section that is around this row. So always make sure to set a larger or equal value for the section than you set for the row. But here, for example, we could set a small width and let me just go back. We duplicate that row and we could then go into the options of that row and set a different value for the width there. And that way you can build up interesting looking layouts even inside a single section. Let's go back and delete the first row. Let's go back into the row options. The margin defines the spacing between the single rows. Just select one of the available options to have a smaller or wider spacing between the single rows. You can also decide to vertically center the single items in this row. This becomes visible when we, for example, duplicate this text block so that the left column now has a different height than the right column. And we see that these are now centered relative to each other. Let's remove that text block again, go back into the settings. Now the breakpoint defines at which breakpoint the elements in this row should stack. As you can see by default, it's set to medium. This means that from tablet landscape on and on larger viewports, the elements will be displayed next to each other, but on smaller ones, they will be stacked. We can demonstrate this by setting a smaller viewport. And if we go into tablet landscape mode, we see that these are now displayed next to each other. 
the order setting allows you to change the order that the single grid items are displayed in. This is, for example, useful for SEO purposes when the way you want to display things is different from the way you want to have the order in your HTML source code. And again, the last two options allow you to set a custom ID and add custom CSS classes to the div that is rendered around this row. And this concludes our look at the section and row settings of the builder. As you have seen, there are plenty of settings available, which allow you to create simple and complex layouts. Just start playing around with them and you will quickly get used to what you can actually accomplish with these settings. Thanks for watching.